Okay, we've got lesson number one, and we're looking at AS Maths, and the first thing we've got to do is index laws. Now, you've done GCSE Maths already, so this should be a bit of a recap for most of you. So, let's get into it. Now, first index law that you've got to know about is where we're multiplying, right? So what do we do? First of all, a bit of terminology. The x's here, so the things with the powers attached to them, these are called bases. Those are your bases, and then the small numbers, or uh, letters in this case, the a and the b, these are called your powers. Or you'll see them called maybe indexes or indices or something, or exponents, okay? So a few different things that they can be called, any of those. But no matter what they're called, what you do when you're multiplying is you add them together providing your bases are the same, okay? So uh, if we have a look at the first one, we've got a to the power of seven times a to the power of two. All we have to do is just add the powers together. So just seven, uh, add two there, so a to the power of nine. Next one, we've got b to the power of minus seven times b to the power of minus nine. Make sure we're adding those together again. So it's just minus seven plus minus nine, so b to the power of minus 16. Next one down, we've got c to the power of seven, and c to the power of minus three. Again, make sure you add those together. So that's c to the power of four, because that's seven plus minus three. Uh, the next one, we've got d to the power of minus four times d to the power of five. Remember, adding those together, that's minus four plus five. What's that gonna give you? Just d to the power of one, or we'll just leave it as d, right? Don't need to put the power of one. Next, we've got a few uh, numbers thrown in as well. So we've got this seven, we've got the six at the start. So what we should do, I'm gonna highlight this in a different color because those are like your ordinary numbers, if you want to call them that. So you can just do six times seven, you treat them normally. Six times seven is just 42. And then you um, have a look at your powers. So you've got e to the power of four times e to the power of two. You add those ones together, right? So you get e to the power of six, done. And the one beneath that, again, let's just separate this. So we'll get like the ordinary or normal numbers there in blue. So that's just minus five times by eight, that's minus 40. And then uh, let's get our powers here in yellow. So we've got f to the power of minus four, no, f to the power of four, sorry, times by f to the power of minus three. So we add those together, that's just gonna give me f to the power of one. So I can leave it as f. Okay, next. So what do we do when we're dividing? When we're dividing, we want to subtract our indices as we've got here over there, so a minus b. So let's get straight into it. A to the power of seven divided by a to the power of two, that's just gonna be a to the power of five because you do seven take away two. Next, uh, b to the power of minus four divided by b to the power of minus five. So you need to be a little bit careful here. Why? Because remember we need to take away our powers, but that means we're doing minus four minus minus five. That in turn gives us minus four plus five. So in actual fact, this is just b to the power of one again, or just b. Next one down, Again, be careful, that would be 10 minus minus three, 10 plus three, so that's c to the power of 13 overall. Now, let's check this one out. So we've put it into a fraction this time. Uh, I'll do the same thing. I'll highlight the six and the two in blue because those are like ordinary numbers. Like, so six divided by two is just three. So we've got that. And now let's deal with the, uh, with the powers. So we've got g to the power of four divided by g to the power of two. That's g to the four divided by g to the two. So what do we do? Just take them away. So that's g to the power of four, take away two, which is two. Okay, next one, we've got uh, 10 and 14 as our two ordinary numbers. That's 10 divided by 14, right? So what we can do is leave that as a simplified fraction. 10 divided by 14, so we can say that's 10 over 14 or five over seven, because you can divide both of those by two. Next, you've got a power of e there on the top. We've got e to the four and just e on the bottom. Now that's obviously e to the power of one. Okay, so I'll fill that in, just on the bottom there, there you go, e to the power of one. And so again, all we do is subtract our powers there because we're doing e to the four divided by e to the one. Take away your powers, you're left with e to the power of three. Now you'll notice you've got f to the power of 12 on the bottom, but you know, you can see at the top there, there's no power of f apparently. So what we'll do is we'll imagine that there was f to the power of zero at the top. So now look what happens. You take away the powers, that's f to the zero divided by f to the 12. So we do zero take away 12. What do we get? f to the minus 12. So you'll notice that because the f 
was in the denominator over there, it's going to carry a minus power, it'll be minus 12, okay? And what we'll need to do is, you know, take that into the next question as well, where we've got here g to the 10 divided by g to the 4 and h to the 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into a fraction. So watch, we've got g to the 10 over g to the 4 and h to the 3. So if I write it like that, it's a bit easier to see. And now let's get the yellow again and we'll highlight the g. So g to the 10, g to the 4, that's nice and simple. We subtract the powers there. So that's just g to the power of 6, because that's 10 take away 4. But then again with the h's, it's like the previous question. So we've got a power of h here on the bottom, but nothing apparently at the top. So what we'll do is imagine there was h to the power of 0, and then we can just do 0 take away 3. So that leaves you with h to the power of minus 3. So do remember that. If you've got that there in the denominator, it's a very easy mistake to make. Some people will just leave this as h to the power of 3, but that's wrong, okay? So make sure you remember that there's that h to the power of 0, or turn it into a fraction so that you can see that the h to the 3 is in the denominator, and then it's going to carry that minus power. Okay, next, index law, is where we've got uh, your powers and brackets. What do we do? We just multiply the powers together. So for the first one, that's a to the power of 7 times 2, which is 14. Next one, again, multiply the powers. That's 4 times by minus 3. That's b to the power of minus 12. Next one, we need to apply that power of minus 3 to both of these, right? The c as well as d. So um, we'll multiply the minus 3 with the 2. So that's c to the power of minus 6. And then multiply that minus 3 with the minus 8 as well. Be careful, that's going to be a positive, obviously, so d to the power of 24. Done. Now, next one where is, it, where is where it gets a little bit more tricky because, yes, you've got uh, your f to the 3 and g to the 5. Those are simple because we know we're going to multiply those powers together, but then you've also got this 5 in the bracket as well. And you need to apply the power of 3 to the 5 as well, okay? So we should break this up. Here's how we're going to break it up. Watch. We're going to go 5 to the power of 3, then f to the 3 cubed, and then g to the 5 cubed. So you can see what I've done. I've just taken everything that was in the bracket and then cubed all of it individually. Okay, And then we'll start working out each individual bit. So uh, we'll go with 5 to the power of 3 first. So 5 to the power of 3, uh, 5 times 5 times 5, 125. Next, uh, let's get blue. We'll go for this one in here. What do we do with those? We just times the powers together. So we've got f to the power of 3 times 3, 9. And then we've got our g's over here. So g to the 5, all to the power of 3. Multiply those, g to the power of 15. Okay, similar idea for the next one. Let's split it up again, just like I did before. So make it 2 to the power of 3, and then e to the minus 8 cubed. So like that over there. And then work out each bit individually. So 2 to the 3, that's going to be just 8. So that's that bit done. And then we'll get blue for the next part. Uh, e to the minus 8, uh, all cubed, times those together, minus 8 times 3. E to the power of minus 24. Great. Perfect. And now here's what we're doing. We're going to combine everything that we've learned together. Okay, so with the first one, we've got a to the power of 4 all cubed. What do you do again? You multiply these together. So that will give us a to the power of 12. And we're multiplying that by 5a to the 6. And now we've got our bases here, which are the same. So we can add those powers together, the 12 and the 6. So we'll have a to the power of 18. And then don't forget, we've got a 5 here, right? So that's just going to be 5a to the 18. Next one down. Uh, remember, split this into each individual part. So we're going with five to the power of three and then b squared all to the power of three and then work out each bit individually. Five to the power of three is 125. And then what do we do with these? You got your brackets, your powers, you times them together, right? So that's b to the power of six and then divide by b to the power of 10. So now uh, let's just get another highlighter. So here's b to the six and we're dividing it by b to the 10 when we're dividing, we subtract our powers. So we're going for 125 and then b to the power of minus 4. 6 take away 10 minus 4. Okay, perfect. Next one as well, very, very similar. So we've got 2 to the power of 6 and then c squared to the power of 6. 
simplify this down. 2 to the power of 6, 2 to the power of 5 is 32, so 2 to the 6 is 64. So we've got 64 over there. And then multiply these together, c to the power of 12, divided by 7, c to the 5, and d to the 4. So a little bit more work with this one, right? But we'll just break it up, and we'll go one step at a time. So we'll start with the 64 divided by 7. I think we'll just leave it as a fraction, right? It's a bit of a horrible one there, so we'll just go 64 um, over 7. Next thing, let's get the uh, the c's sorted out. So that's c to the 12 divided by c to the 5. Uh, we can take away the powers there, so that's going to leave us with c to the power of 7. So I'll take away 5. And now we've got another one of these, right? Where you've got the power of d here, but no power of d before it. So what can we do? Well, just remember you can put d to the power of 0 over there. Um, and then take away your powers. So you've got 0 take away 4, that's d to the power of minus 4. That would be our answer for that one. One more to go, let's get this one done. Um, break it up again. So we've got 3 squared, then e squared, all squared, and then f to the 6, all squared as well. So let's work this out individually. Um, 3 squared there is 9, then multiply these together, so you've got e to the power of 4, Multiply these together, so you've got f to the power of 12. And you're dividing that by 27, e to the minus 3, and f to the minus 10. Okay. Let's work out each little bit again individually. We'll start with the 9 and the 27. So that's 9 divided by 27, which is a third. So we've got that bit done. Next, we've got e to the power of 4 uh, divided by e to the power of minus 3. Remember, when you're dividing, we're subtracting the powers, but because there's a minus 3 there, you've got to be careful. That's 4 minus minus 3, so that's actually 4 plus 3. So that's e to the power of 7. And then let's deal with the f's now. So we've got f to the power of 12 divided by f to the power of minus 10. So again, very similar thing. Be very careful there with your powers. That's going to be 12 plus 10. So that's f to the power of 22. And there it is, all done. So, Lots and lots of examples covered there. Now it's your go. So here's three practice questions for you to do. Pause the video, have a quick go, and we'll catch up in a couple seconds to go through the answers. Righto, it is solution time, so let's crack on with it. Now the first one, we've got a multiplication, right? So we're doing three times by minus six. What's that going to give me? That's minus 18. Uh, and then let's deal with the f's now as well. So f squared times by f to the minus 8. Remember, when we're multiplying, what do we do with our powers? We add them together. So that's going to be 2 plus minus 8. So that's just f to the power of minus 6. Next one. So we've got 6 uh, in our numerator there, 4 in our denominator. So we're doing 6 divided by 4. Simplify that. That's just 3 over 2. Then let's deal with the, uh, the e. So we've got e to the 7. And then just e in the bottom, right? So remember, if it's just e, that's e to the power of 1. And so we're dividing. We take our powers away, e to the power of 6. And then here's one of these where the f is in the denominator, no f on the top. So you could have put in f to the 0. Or if you're happy to, by now, you could just go f to the minus 2 because it's in your denominator. And the next one down here, we'll need to break these up individually, right? So apply this squared here through everything in the bracket. So we'll have 5 squared, then e cubed all squared, and then f to the 9 also squared. So work these out individually. 5 squared, that's going to be 25, and then multiply the powers, the 3 and the 2 there, so e to the power of 6, and then f to the power of 18, and we're dividing that by 2 e to the minus 4. So let's get cracking with this. Uh, we'll have 25 divided by 2. Again, we'll just leave that as a fraction. So I think we'll just put it as 25 over 2. We'll keep that there. Next, let's deal with the uh, e. So we've got e to the 6 uh, divided by e to the minus 4. So do be careful with your signs again. We'll need to uh, do 6 minus minus 4. That's 6 plus 4. So it's just e to the power of 10. And now the f's. Well, you can see you've got a power of f here, but no power of f here. If you wanted to, you could put in your f to the power of 0 just so that you make no mistake whatsoever. And then you've got f to the 18 divided by f to the 0, which obviously is just f to the 18, because you're doing 18 take away 0. And there it is. So hopefully you got all of those correct. So 
There it is, index laws recapped really, really quickly. Hopefully that was just a quick uh, refresher for you from GCSE. Um, and if it wasn't, then hopefully you're up to speed with all your index laws now. So stay tuned. Uh, next video is coming. I think it's on a bit more simplifying with indices, fractions, that kind of thing. So I hope to catch you in that video. Until then, take care and keep practicing your maths.